I really wasn't sure to bring this to your attention. But it's written by somebody who has a wonderful record of reporting and accuracy at a wonderful newspaper, the Washington Times. And the reporter is Bill Gertz, who is a solid, serious journalist. And I read this, and I have to be honest with you, my jaw dropped. It drops a lot lately, it really does, with what's going on in this country. And Gertz writes, a 2010 Pentagon directive on military support to civilian authorities, military support to civilian authorities, details what critics say is a troubling policy that envisions the Obama administration's potential use of military force against Americans. All right, hold on. This isn't some kook internet show. I'm reading you the first sentence in the article. And I I had to turn my head and look again and say, where am I reading this? Is some kook on the internet? No, it's Bill Gertz for the Washington Times. And I read on. The directive contains non-controversial provisions on support to civilian fire and emergency services, special events, and the domestic use of the Army Corps of Engineers. All right, fair enough. The troubling aspect of the directive outlines presidential authority for the use of military arms and forces, including unarmed drones, in operations against domestic unrest. Quote, this appears to be the latest step in the administration's decision to use force within the United States against its citizens, said a defense official opposed to the directive. Directive number 3025.18, Defense Support of Civil Authorities, was issued December 29, 2010, and states that U.S. commanders, quote, are provided emergency authority under this directive, unquote. Quote, federal military forces shall not be used to quell civil disturbances unless specifically authorized by the president in accordance with applicable law or permitted under emergency authority, unquote, the directive states. Quote, in these circumstances, those federal military commanders have the authority in extraordinary emergency circumstances where prior authorization by the president is impossible and duly constituted local authorities are unable to control the situation to engage temporarily in activities that are necessary to quell large-scale, unexpected civil disturbances, unquote, under two conditions. Continues Bill Gertz in the Washington Times. The conditions include military support needed, quote, to prevent significant loss of life or wanton destruction of property and are necessary to restore governmental function and public order, unquote. A second use is when federal, state, and local authorities, quote, are unable or decline to provide adequate protection for federal property or federal governmental functions, unquote. I'm using the quotes so you know I'm not making this up. It's coming straight from the story, and Bill Gertz, the reporter, is using this straight out of the directive. Quote, federal action including the use of federal military forces, is authorized when necessary to protect the federal property or functions, the directive states. Now, military assistance can include loans of arms, ammunition, vessels, and aircraft. The directive states clearly that it's for engaging civilians during times of unrest. A U.S. official said the Obama administration considered but rejected deploying military force under the directive during the recent standoff with Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy and his armed supporters. You following all this, Mr. Producer? It really makes you shake your head, doesn't it? Mr. Bundy is engaged in a legal battle, I'm reading from the Gertz piece, with the Federal Bureau of Land Management over unpaid grazing fees. Along with a group of protesters, he in April confronted federal and local authorities in a standoff that ended when the authorities backed down. Now, the Pentagon Directive authorizes the Secretary of Defense to approve the use of unarmed drones in domestic unrest, but it bans the use of missile-firing unmanned aircraft. Whew. Quote, use of armed, that is, unmanned aircraft systems, that, now let me repeat that, use of armed, unmanned aircraft systems, that is, armed drones, is not authorized, the Directive says, now, this directive was signed by then-Deputy Defense Secretary William Lynn. A copy can be found on the Pentagon website. Defense analysts say there has been a buildup of military units within non-security-related federal agencies, notably the creation of special weapons and tactics teams, SWAT teams. The buildup has raised questions about whether the Obama administration is undermining civil liberties under the guise of counterterrorism, 
and counter-narcotics efforts. Other agencies with SWAT teams reportedly include the Department of Agriculture, the Railroad Retirement Board. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's not funny, but the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Office of Personnel Management, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and, of course, the Education Department. Old Arnie Duncan over there needs a SWAT team. The militarization of federal agencies under little-known statutes that permit deputization of security officials comes as the White House has launched verbal attacks on private citizens' ownership of firearms, despite the fact that most gun owners are law-abiding citizens, writes Bill Gertz. A White House National Security Council spokeswoman declined to comment. Now, I happen to know that under certain procedures, the posse commentitis law, that the military can be used in very narrow circumstances, and it requires a list of top officials to sign off on it. The president, the secretary of defense, typically uh, an intelligence agency, perhaps the director of the CIA, the head of the FBI, a number of people. So if somebody raises an objection, they can't go through with it. This sounds different than that to me. This sounds different than that to me. And Bill Gertz, who's an old hand of what goes on in Washington on the military, national security, and intelligence side, I am certain would indicate that it's that statute, if in fact it was that statute. But it's not. It's not mentioned here. This is a directive, perhaps a directive under that statute. But whatever it is, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I'm getting very concerned. I'm talking to somebody who served in the Reagan administration, a lifelong Republican, a lifelong conservative. I, I, am, I am getting very, very concerned that these institutions they're creating, some in secret, some in public, can't be good for a republic. And that rather than decentralizing the government, rather than leaving us alone, rather than constantly meddling in our lives, constantly coercing us, telling us what we can and can't do, telling us whether we can get health care, and on and on and on. It's getting worse and worse and worse. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Leave that to the rest. I'm reading to you from a news report by Bill Gertz, a longtime award-winning reporter, journalist who's an expert in this area, writing in the Washington Times today. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. 